Hi everyone, this is Kathy from SAG Moraine, and I am joined here today by Jeremy Ohms of Wild World Gardens, and Jeremy is going to share with us some of the some good how-to best method tips on how to plant a tree or a shrub in your landscape. Hi Jeremy, thank you for joining us and bestowing some of your great information on us, your great knowledge. Right. So here we have a pagoda dogwood that Jeremy is planting in this landscape. And uh, take it away, Jeremy, tell us how to properly plant a tree or a shrub. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, so we're planting this pagoda dogwood here in this shady area, which it will, you know, prefer and thrive and grow well here. Um, this tree will get about 15 feet tall by 15 feet wide. The nice thing about a pagoda dogwood is that it has a horizontal branching pattern, so it will fill out the space really nicely. Um, might want to prune it a little bit, you know, this way as it gets close to the house, but you can shape it, you know, to, to grow how you want it to. Um, it also gets these wonderful creamy white flowers in the spring, followed by blue black berries. And then, you know, this, these leaves will turn sort of a darker reddish color foliage in the fall. Um, so it's gorgeous in all seasons. All seasons. Yeah. And the birds love the berries and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, helps out. It's beneficial for pollinators, uh, provides some winter habitat too, you know? So this tree, um, is container grown which is, in my opinion, a really good option if you can find it compared to a bald and burlap tree. Um, it's, they're just easier to handle and move around. Um, that's the main difference. And when it, you're on your own or just have a small team of people, you know, it's much easier to move one of these containers. Um, the other thing is that it's not actually dug up out of the ground like a bald and burlap tree is. A bald and burlap tree is grown in the ground and then dug up and transplanted, right? Like burlap and transplanted. So this is grown in this container. So there's less like, there's less transplant shock uh, when you're planting this. And less um, stress to the plant. Less stress to the tree and to the plant. Having said that though, it does require a little bit more watering because the roots aren't quite as developed and and you know deep um so there's less transplant shock but it does need a little bit more attention as far as watering um but you know this this is a what is this a 15 gallon container and uh yeah i mean look at this easy to lift up no problem so good well, so so you would say that uh as a rule a homeowner who's planting a tree or a shrub on their own property could easily handle up to a 15 gallon. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, and then, so what we do usually is we, before we dig the hole, we take the tree out of the container and we'll measure the root ball, the, the width, the width and the depth. And that's going to determine how big our hole is. Um, and so we did that, and then we, we dug our hole accordingly. Uh, you want to dig it your hole a little bigger and deeper than the actual root ball. So this, for example, is, you know, 17 or 16 inches wide by, you know, 10 inches deep. So we dug a hole that's about two feet wide by uh, about 14 inches deep. And, you know, you kind of like figure out, put, put the tree in. That's the other nice thing is you can play with it some because it's not a gigantic heavy tree. Put that in the hole, you know, figure out if it's too low or not. What you really want to be looking for is you want the crown of the tree. So this part, and this is a good tip too. You want to definitely like peel back some of the soil on these trees because when they're grown, a lot of soil is added to the top. 
So you want to get to this crown, which is like the, the flare, the tree flare, where it kind of the roots kind of flare out. Okay, so that's the place where you see the first root. That's where you see the out. first root is this flare. And uh, you want to kind of expose that. And that you want that to be an inch or two above the ground, your, you know, your soil height here. So this right now is a little bit low. So we're going to add a little bit more soil in here because... That's a great tip because so many times, I mean, if, if a tree is planted too low, it can get root rot from that, yeah. right? It can get waterlogged, it can get root rot. So you want the, the, the water to, to cascade off the tree, not pull up. And you want it to go towards the drip line, you know, the, the roots. That's, mm -hmm. where, that's really where you want to water. So that was a little bit too low. So we're going to add a few shovels of dirt. From, and we didn't amend this at all. This is all the native soil. It's all clay. So the, these principles hold true whether we're planting native or non-native. But, you know, it, it's an even more of a perk if you're planting native. Because as Jeremy said, no no fertilizer, nothing needed. These plants co-evolved with our local soil. So they are happy with it just as it is, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, so once once you figured out the depth, which we got a good depth right here. This is a little bit higher than the soil line. Then you want to figure out your orientation for the tree. So you kind of look at the, the existing branching patterns. And so I know that I want this tree to grow out this way and that way. Not so much this way. Um, and so I see a way that it's branching already where some of these branches are already growing out that way. I see that. So I'm going to orient it to kind of encourage that. Um, actually, And it should naturally kind of start to branch out this way more, right? Because this is the way of the sun. Exactly. It's going to reach for the sun anyway. But it's always good to sort of set it up to how you want it to, mm -hmm. what the, way, the way the branches are sort of directing you anyway. So, um, so yeah. So this feels like a good orientation. Um, so we've got our depth right, we've got our placement right, and now it's just a matter of filling in that hole again. Uh, you know, we, we kind of, the so other thing is we, we broke up the roots a little bit on the bottom when we took it out of the container, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't need to go crazy on it. You know, like these, these roots are gonna, just go straight into the soil and be happy. Um, so if they if, if, if somebody forgets to break up the roots or they just take it out of the pot, they're probably fine. Probably fine, but like I said, you know, because it's in a container, it will be a little bit more root bound than a, a ball of the right? Okay. So what the main thing is like we broke up the roots on the very bottom. Because and basically you'll see like some of the roots kind of a little bit bound up. But you know what, they're... You so know, what so we're we trying to a, do... A, tr a trowel or a soil knife and kind of just, just nudge it a little. So we're trying to get them to not be like circling the... Like circling around, like, yeah, like exactly. being okay. Yeah. Um, so now I'm just filling in the soil we had already dug out. And everyone, you would follow this practice, same thing whether you're planting a tree or a shrub. Whether it's one gallon or 15. Yeah, and the containers, you know, they usually come in 5, 10, 15 gallons. Um, 15 being the biggest. And they're just a lot more manageable, for sure. So, as you're putting the soil in, kind of put your shovel in there, walk around it, make sure there's no air pockets. Uh, you want to make sure the soil's really getting down in there and all the gaps and holes. So, kind of break it up around, keep putting soil down, and then What I would do next is give it a really good watering. Um, 
you know? How should you, how, how often and how should you water it when it's first planted? Um, I would make sure to give it a couple inches of water uh, when it's first planted. Um, and then, you know, you're looking at a couple inches every week, you know, for the first two weeks, depending on the rainfall and everything. Uh, should that be? You don't want to overwater. You don't want to underwater. So, should that be all at once, every day, every other day? Not, not every day. Uh, definitely, definitely that first day that you plant. You want to, you want to give it a good dose of water. And what I would do is just get the soaker, get the hose, and put it there. Set it right here and let it soak in. You know, for five, ten minutes or so. Um, and then do that, you know, a couple times the first week, scale it back. Eventually, you'll only be doing it once a week. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if you see during, during what, it's June right now, so it's already 80 degrees today, but, you know, uh, it's going to get hot and dry in July and August. So give it some supplemental water then, you know, once a week. Like I said, it's better it's better to do a deep watering at the base than to do any sort of sprinkler or light water. You know, just put the hose right there and let it just fill up because uh, you really want to soak those roots. And gotcha. that's true of all, all your plants, right? So, gotcha. Now, I noticed that you're you're pretty much stopping the soil at that that crown line that you talked about earlier as, as to how far down you want you want to dig the hole yeah. so you pretty much want the crown to be right there at the top of where the soil yep, comes exactly would you i so often see trees largely mostly trees sometimes shrubs planted with soil or mulch that is mounded up almost forming a, a volcano type structure around the tree covering a lot of that of the stem um is that harmful to the tree? Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's going to invite disease and, you know, to the, to the trunk of the tree. It's going to encourage uh, roots to grow way too shallow. Um, so, you know, after this, after you water, then I would definitely recommend mulching to maintain that, retain that moisture. But just mulch up to this same level don't go any higher you don't need to mulch up the trunk or anything you know make sure it's at the same level just, just a light a just light, a light layer mulch. light inch or two you know all around the tree definitely get all the way around where the farthest branches are um, to retain moisture yeah but you don't need to pile it up like a volcano around the trunk that's a no-no um so yeah well, there this we is wonderful. Thank, thank you very much, Jeremy. This was very helpful as we uh, go into, you know, later in the season, during the, the, the late summer, or certainly in, in the fall when it's time to plant our trees and shrubs. Now we know how to do it correctly at home. Enjoy your tree. Thank you. <laughs>